Hello and welcome to Caravanning with the Misses. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for watching and thanks for being there. Thanks for subscribing as well. I hope you're all well. Um, yeah, so the reason for today's little vlog is I thought I'd do a recap on uh, our lovely year caravanning and, um, and also just a, a quick look forward into what we might be doing next week, next year even. Um, it's going to be a chatty, a chatty vlog, which I'm not particularly keen on. I don't, I'm not keen on doing these because like if you spend, I don't know, I find anyway myself, if I spend more than a couple of minutes talking to the um, camera and not getting any feedback, then it, I, I kind of get bored of listening to my own voice. So what I might do is I might have a couple of breaks, but edit them out. Mm, there you go. So you don't even notice. We well, probably will notice a bit. But anyway, see how we go. Try and keep it entertaining, you know. First of all, I have got to start um, the vlog off with a bit of pretty bad news, to be honest. Um, it's Eric. I know um, to a lot of you, uh, he's pretty much the star of the channel. Um, but unfortunately, he's, uh, he's not very well. In fact, he's very ill. Um, he got taken in probably about one and a half weeks ago. And they found he's got, oh, now I wrote it down, hang on. Oh, I'll have to look at my notes as well. I've got the computer notes. He's got myocarditis, which is a swollen right-hand heart, of right-hand side of his heart, which is really serious. And he's got chronic, well, suspected chronic liver disease. Um, but they can't find out about the liver disease because they'll have to open him up and um, do an autopsy, actually take a bit out. And of course, with the heart, he's not well enough to be operated on at the moment. The reason I took him in is because he wasn't eating um, for one day and then the next day he could barely stand. So I took him in and they found this wrong with him. So that's all rather worrying at the moment. He hasn't eaten for about one and a half weeks. We're just starting to manage to get food into him now. Uh, we've just worked out a method of sort of, we've got a syringe. If we inject the food into the back part of his mouth, he can't spit it out. Uh, so he swallows it. So he does that. And then he actually starts to eat it anyway from his bowl. So he's starting to eat bits now. So fingers crossed. We're going back to the vet for a checkup tomorrow. Um, I think he'll probably, he's just going to take a heart reading, see if his heart's getting better because he's on medication for his heart. So yeah, it's all really, really, really worrying. Obviously a bad time for it to happen over Christmas. Um, so yeah, obviously something like this, um, for us anyway, we find it all encompassing at the moment. It's pretty much taking up all our time. It's all that we can do and think about is, uh, sit with Eric and try and get him to eat and comfort him as best we can. He's lost a hell of a lot of weight. Anyway, I'll probably keep you updated um, on that. Um, but yeah, so, and that's one reason why I decided to do this vlog now. I thought well, it'll take my mind off it for a little bit, give me something else to do. Uh, but poor old Sadie, she'd like to be in, well, would she like to be in the vlog? As you probably know, she's not keen on being vlogged, so she probably wouldn't like to be in the vlog. But anyway, she's happy that she's not because um, she's obviously not in a good place right now. She's worrying about Eric. Um, okay, so let's crack on. So yeah, I'm having to refer to my notes. So this is about our trips that we got up to last year being 2022. I hope everybody had a nice Christmas and is looking forward to a nice new year. Um, in all, we did about 20 trips in our little caravan, which is great. Mostly three or four nights each. Uh, reason being because it just fits in with our lifestyles, as I've said in previous vlogs. Sadie works Wednesday and Thursday mornings. By morning, I mean about she works from about half past five in the morning till about midday. Um, and me being a part-time driving instructor, I can work whenever I like. So if I want to have a week off, I just say to my pupils, you can't have a lesson next week. And they're fine with that. So that works really well. So that means we tend to try and get most of our trips in sort of uh, from Fridays to Monday or Tuesday um, of the next week. And that, that works quite well, actually, in just a nice three or four day trips. So let us begin without any further ado. Now, let's have a look. Um, so, first trip was back in January, the 10th of January, five nights, and we went to Sandwich down in Kent, which was great. It was 20, night, 20 pounds per night, which is one thing I'm gonna try and tell you about how much each site was. It was 20 pounds per night uh, with electric hookup. Um, and 
Was it hard standing or was it on the grass? It was just about hard standing. Yes, it was hard standing. And we liked that actually, I liked that a lot. It was just on some fishing lakes. The reason I liked it is because it was quite near Sandwich. It was a, probably about a 10 minute walk into Sandwich. Um, and Sandwich, beautiful little town we found out. There's a lovely pizza restaurant as well in there. Um, all these are being vlogged by the way, Ooh, with the exception of one, I'll tell you about that later. But yeah, there's a lovely pizza restaurant uh, which is dog friendly and they do vegan pizzas in Sandwich, so well impressed with that. Um, we like Sandwich as a whole to be honest, I wouldn't mind going back there. Um, and Sandwich is obviously quite near Ramsgate and Deal in Kent. So that was good. I got on the train to Ramsgate and did I get on the train to Dover? I think we might have got on the train to Dover at some point. But anyway, so yeah, so it's that part of the country in Kent and that was lovely. We enjoyed that, to be honest. Um, that was a nice little trip. Enjoyed it. Love sandwich. Um, yeah, nice walks, nice little pubs, nice little pubs in sandwich. So after that, that was for five nights. I'll try not to go on too much about these because obviously there are 20 of them and I don't want to be banging on all day. Um, got other things to do. I'll go after Eric. So after that, on the 11th of February, so about a month later, for four nights, we went to Oxford Camping and Caravanning Club site. £22.75 per night. That was grass with electric and awning. So lovely riverside walks into town. Lovely old pubs oozing with character, as you'd imagine. Um, yeah, nice walks there. Unfortunately, the rain was a bit miserable, I seem to remember. But we liked that a lot. Um, so nice walks, pubs, yeah, liked it. And quite near Oxford as well. Yeah, nice walks into town, into Oxford town, so that was good. Then a couple of weeks later after that, 25th of February, oh yeah, we had our Valentine's night, didn't we, in um, in Oxford. Um, and we vlogged it as well, I don't know if you've seen that vlog, but it's quite, well, I quite like it. Um, but yeah, so that was good. Anyway, yeah, so we like that one, good memories of Oxford. Wouldn't mind going back there. Then we went to 25th of February, three nights, Henlow Bridge Lakes, £33 a night, a little bit more pricey, hard standing with EHU near Henlow, just on the border of Hertfordshire and Bedfordshire, um, sort of near Stevenage, Letchworth sort of area. Uh, there's, yeah, we like that. Um, reason I went there is because it was my aunt's birthday. Um, happy, well, sorry, happy birthday. Hello, Elaine, if you're watching. Um, so yeah, that was nice. Went to, near Henlow, a couple of pubs right nearby in Henlow, and nice old pubs actually. And it's right near Arlesey train station, uh, so you could get the train to anywhere you like. You couldn't really hear the train. Well, no, you couldn't hear the train actually. It wasn't close enough to hear the train. Um, but a nice little five-minute walk to the train station where you can get buses, and there's a good pub there as well. Um, Arlesey itself not got too much going on there, um, but nice walks, liked it there. Wouldn't mind going again, although getting a little bit pricey. Okay, so after that, we then went to 11th of March, so that was 25th of February. This is the 11th of March, six nights, Keswick, camping and caravanning club site, £30 per night. Um, hard standing EHU. So £30 a night, thought that was not too bad for somewhere like Keswick, because obviously it's quite touristy. Um, ne right next, I don't know if you know where it is, but it's right next to Derwent Water Lake. It's actually got, um, it's got its own sort of beach area going out onto the lake, which was lovely. And we were parked up right next to that as well. So that was beautiful. Views are amazing over the lake, Derwent Water. It's really, really good. Unfortunately, Sadie was pretty ill there and it rained all the time as well, which is a real shame. Um, the couple of times I did manage to get out, so I left Sadie in the caravan, I went into Keswick. Um, the caravan site's just next to Keswick as well, really easy to get into. Um, some gorgeous old pubs, remember I went into one old pub, it's in the vlog, um, where there were bicycles and stuff sort of on the walls and doors and things coming out the ceiling and oh, it's just fantastic, oozing with character. Um, I had a couple of good nights there. I went to, there was an open mic night at one of the pubs uh, that did a vegan pizza and was dog friendly. So Eric was there as well. So that was nice, enjoyed that. And I thought, oh yeah, I went to another open mic night, didn't I, on the other side of Keswick. So that was nice. And I went for a lovely walk up a, um, a little mountain that is in my vlog. I forget what it's called, but I did, did do a nice walk. Obviously, lots of lovely walks around there. Really, really, really nice. Love to go back there again, because it was pretty much ruined by Sadie. I don't think she came out at all, bless her. She was so poorly, she just stayed in the van all the time. And the rain was dreadful, so yeah. 
Um, and then on the way back from Keswick, so that's six nights in Keswick, on the way back from that, on the 17th of March, for four nights, we stayed in Riddings Wood near Alfreton in Derbyshire, sort of the Peak District area. That was nice, £23.50 a night, hard standing with EHU. Uh, very near a couple of nice old pubs like that, lovely walks and the view from where the caravan was, because it was quite high up, because it was one of those sites that's on a quite a bit of a slope, so the caravan was quite high up. Lovely, lovely views across the country. Right next to Riddings Wood as well, so that's lovely for dog walking. Um, I enjoyed that, but uh, Sadie was on the tail end of her illness, so she pretty much spent the whole time in the caravan again so really unfortunate um, the weather perked up a bit there as well so yeah i enjoyed that i wouldn't mind going back there because well both of those definitely like to go back to keswick and um riddings wood because obviously sadie wasn't able to get out hardly at all anyway so that was the 17th of march for four nights let's move this down a touch then after that we went to 29th of april for four nights oh yeah we went over to wales um, that's the thing with our last with well, our trips last year. We went into went up to Scotland, went over to Wales and down to Kent, which is pretty much the furthest I've ever been. Certainly the furthest I've ever been a year. Um, but yeah, so we went all over the shop in the caravan. So Wales, um, we were stayed at Hendra Minach near Barmouth. Um, it's camping and caravanning club site. This is probably about the most expensive site we've stayed at. It's forty pounds a night. It was on grass with electric hookup. Basically, we found it a bit too expensive because the, the facilities were fairly basic. It was next to the sea, which was lovely. Um, but yeah, for £40 a night, I mean, the views from where it wasn't on a sort of slanty bit. So the views were just of other caravans. It's pretty much all we could see. Um, but the um, but it was literally three, four minute walk to the beach, although it was a pebbly beach. Um, but it was nice to be close to the beach. So that was nice. But yeah, a, a, a bit overpriced. So it was near Barmouth, which was lovely to walk into, probably about half an hour, 20 minute walk into Barmouth, which is great, uh, where there's a lovely microbrewery. I remember going to a couple of pubs there. That was nice. We really enjoyed that, actually. It was a nice walk along the beach into Barmouth. So that was nice. Wouldn't mind going back there again. Really like Barmouth, but not to that site. Maybe somewhere else around there. Obviously, lovely part of the country in West Wales. So yeah, lovely. And then, so that was 29th of April, shortly after that, probably, yeah, probably about a week after that, actually, we went to our, hang on, let's just get this down, went to our favourite caravan site, uh, 6th of May, four nights, Sandy Goals, yeah, Sandy Goals, everybody, that's next to Munsley and Cromer, in between Munsley and Cromer in Norfolk on the east coast. So that's our favourite place. We've been there a couple of times a year before and we're going there again next year, etc. £23 a night, hard standing with electric and views to absolutely die for going because it's on the top of a cliff. Um, it's also on a bit of a slope as well. So pretty much wherever you put your caravan, you'll, you always get good views of the sea. Um, beautiful, absolutely lovely views there. We love it there. It's lovely and relaxed. It's really, really, really nice. Slight problem, is, well, not problem. Slight thing is, nearest pubs are probably about 20, 30 minute walk away, uh, but it is a nice walk into Munsley along the beach or along the road. Um, there's buses outside, so you can get buses everywhere. We prefer not to drive when we go on holiday. We will do sometimes if the weather's really crap, uh, but we per prefer just to leave the car at the caravan and make our way round by, oh, by bicycle as well. We did a bit of cycling there, didn't we? Because we got the dog, um, yeah, we got Eric's trailer for the bike, so that was good. Did a bit of cycling around Munsle. So yeah, I loved that. Munsley, Munsley, Munsley. Perfect, absolutely perfect beach, uh, which is literally five, ten minute walk down the uh, hill from the caravan site. Lovely, lovely beach. Couldn't ask for more. Sand, gorgeous, dog friendly all year round. Um, hardly anybody walking on it. Really, really nice. Uh, you'll see that if you see the vlog. Absolutely love it. So that was Sandy Gull, 6th of May. And then 10th of May for three nights, Cambridge Camping and Caravanning Club site, £22.50 this was, uh, which was not bad for Cambridge. It was just south of Cambridge near Great Shelford. Um, it was on a nice grass field with no electricity, so it was off-grid, uh, but on a nice big grass field. I really, really liked it there, actually. 
Um, it was lovely just sitting there looking over the grass. Uh, it was just off the main bit as well. All the caravans were in the main bit and they had this grass field just off the side for, uh, for off-gridders. Uh, which was quite quiet so that was absolutely beautiful lovely field um there's lo nice walks into town well, it's a long quite a long walk into town i think it took us about an hour or something to walk into town um of course you get buses loads of buses nearby um pubs yeah pubs not too close we ended up um in our search for going to the local pub we did find one or two one the nicest one wasn't dog friendly um and then on the way back we went into shelford rugby club because um that had been recommended to us by somebody on on site and uh, they say that the dog friendly served us beer but it was a bit of a strange thing it sort of like felt i was like i was walking in in the middle of a, a meeting because the rugby club had, i don't know they've been doing some practicing and stuff and they were sort of like huddled around a couple of the tables um chatting chatting about very, very serious stuff and then i sat on a tra table with my pint and eric um and then all of a sudden about f three or four of them s s joined me on my table and just sort of like were chatting amongst themselves having some sort of meeting um which is a little bit strange but yeah that, that was a bit weird uh, but that was about the closest pub to the site so yeah slight downside there um, but nice walks as you'd expect beautiful to go and see a bit of cambridge again i remember the rain was quite bad so we went into cambridge by car at one point um, but yeah loads of character loads of pubs we had a nice meal there as well yeah it was nice very nice yeah i wouldn't mind going back to that one again actually as well obviously it'd be nice to see cambridge properly at some point um when the weather's a bit better so next one that was 10th of may for three nights the next one is 13th of may for three nights hales fruit farm in winchcombe in the cotswolds that's where we went for our bailey discovery d4 um meetup where uh we've got like a group of us that all have the same type of caravan and we met there for the first time so that was really nice actually it's nice meeting them um, it was a lovely, lovely campsite though, I have to say. Good views. We went, it was £20 a night, no EHU, so that's off grid, and we were on the grass. Again, it was on a bit of a hill, so we got up near the top, and the views were stunning. It was really, really, really gorgeous. Uh, I remember the weather as well was nice, that helped. Needless to say, lovely, lovely walks through the Cotswolds. Um, nearest, well, the nearest pub too, there was a bit of a walk away, I think it was about half an hour. Um, I came back from it through the fields actually so if I go there go there again and there's a nice walk through the fields to this pub I forget the name of it but it was really nice uh, so yeah that wasn't too bad half a walk near his pub um, really enjoyed that that was a love I wouldn't mind going back there again 20 pounds a night not too bad with no electric hookup um, really nice walks going into Winchcombe as well. I think that was about half an hour, 40 minute walk, which is a lovely uh, bustling historic Cotswold town, if you don't know it, with ancient underground tunnels going from the Abbey and one of the pubs we went into, the nice um, Irish uh, landlady, she showed us into one of the sort of cellar under the, under the pub. Uh, that had one of the tunnels going to the abbey from it and they used to shelter there to get away from uh, get away from some torture or something but anyway it's great finding out about uh, listening to her telling us about the history of the place so yeah really friendly over there lovely lovely pubs love Winchcombe and that's one of our favorite areas actually we've decided to go over there it's only about one and a half hours from Leicester so yeah we quite like going over that that area been there before yeah we've been near Winchcombe Winchcombe Carapa Camping and Caravanning Club site actually I think we've been to on a different vlog but this one wasn't Camping Caravan it was just a hail Hales fruit farm and it was lovely 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 got me hat on anyway where, where was I um, okay so then it was 2nd of June three nights we went to oh yeah we went to Glaston Budget um, local music festival near us in sunny Leicester uh, we go there well I go there pretty much every year it's the first year for a while that Sadie's been there and we took the caravan for the first time ever it's really good um, cost wise it was about 50 pounds per night but that's including uh, entrance into the festival itself for the weekend we went Friday night Saturday night Sunday night um, 
absolutely fantastic. Had such a great time. Vlogged it, if you want to check the vlog out. Such a great time. It's really, really, really good fun. Um, if you're into festivals and live music and stuff and have a caravan, I suggest you take it along because it's so brilliant. Just having your own space, we can get back and chill. Um, downside is... It was raining quite a lot. That's the thing, as you probably saw in the vlog, if you watched it, um, the last night it was raining all through the night and the problem with these music festivals, as I found now, is obviously everybody, or nearly everybody, comes at the same time and nearly everybody leaves at the same time. So in this case, there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of caravans spread over about ooh, three, four, maybe five fields. And of course, during the last night they were all leaving one by one you could hear them going past the caravan about one in the morning one by one they were leaving going through all the fields and it's chucking it down all through the night we left at about 7 30 in the morning by which time of course there was quite a lot of mud everywhere um, so we had to drive through about three fields in the mud um, my car's only two-wheel drive as well so it's quite a good test for it. Did actually make it, um, probably just because I, I managed to build up some momentum to start off with. So as we we're sliding through the mud, the momentum just sort of kept us going. But yeah, we just about made it. Uh, that was a bit scary. Um, but yeah, so, but you live and learn, you live and learn. I mean, that's the thing. So I should have kept an eye on the weather forecast and thought, right, it's raining tonight. Perhaps we'll leave a bit earlier, something like that. Uh, but we had such a fantastic uh, time at Glaston Budget. Can't wait for next year. It's going to be great. Going to be great. Um, brilliant. Tribute. It's a tribute festival with tribute bands playing. Um, but there's also lots and lots of um, bands, original bands as well in the in the marquees, which I really like. So yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely time. Good time there. That was three nights. Um, and then after that, oh yeah, we started our trip to sunny, sunny. <laughs> Sunny, sunny. I was going to say sunny, sunny Scotland, but it was a not so sunny, sunny Scotland. Um, yes, yes. So there we go. Anyway, so we got a few caravan sites because Scotland obviously is a long way from us in the Midlands. So we stayed over at, um, on the way to Scotland, we stayed, stayed over at Barnard Castle camping and caravanning club site. It's just near the border of us. And, well, it's just up, not near the border, It's but it's well, nearish the border. But it's right up there in County Durham, uh, Barnard Castle. Um, yeah, that was, we stayed there one night, 24 pounds, it cost about 24 pounds 80. That's an unusual price. That's with uh, grass with no electric hookup. So yeah, just grass with no electric hookup for £24.80. Unfortunately, right next to the caravan or next to the um, off-grid field, because uh, we had no EHU to start off with, next to the off-grid there's a couple of great big warehouses with um, pigs in, you know, pig uh, battery farmed pigs in, uh, which you obviously make a hell of a racket sometimes. I mean, when we got there, they were just squeal, constantly squealing and probably being fed or something, but it was going on and on and on. And of course, Sadie being a sensitive vegan, bless her, um, she found it quite traumatic uh, listening to all that going on. And I, I wasn't keen, obviously I'm vegan myself. Um, so yeah, that, that wasn't the best spot. Uh, so uh, we had a word with them anyway. They moved us to a different pitch near the entrance uh, that had electric, which we then had to pay extra for, about six pounds, something like that. But at least it meant we didn't use our gas. So yeah, that was the very unfortunate bit we found about that. Uh, obviously a lot of people probably be all right with that, but we weren't, so we definitely won't be going back there. But it's very unfortunate though, because it was a lovely pitch, uh, a lovely site, um, right near Bernard Castle, Bernard, Barnard Castle, and there's a really good walk as well through uh, some woods next to some streams. It's a lovely walk to Barnard Castle, uh, the village itself, and over a river. Really, really, really nice walk. Although when we got there, found it a bit difficult, found it impossible, impossible in fact, to find a vegan Indian takeaway. Uh, the one takeaway, Indian takeaway we did find, they said that all their sauces, I think, have animal fat in or something. So yeah, because I, I, I went there to get an Indian takeaway and take it back to the caravan, but unfortunately I left empty-handed and the pubs didn't seem... Yeah, there were a couple of pubs that were all right. But yeah, so we stayed in one while trying to think of what to do next. We, as in Eric and I. So nice walk, so. 
Um, yeah, but won't be going back to that site again. And so after that, this is on our way to Scotland. Then on the 25th of June, the next day, for two nights, we stayed in Aberfeldy in Perthshire, right in the middle of uh, Scotland. I keep wanting to say sunny, sunny Scotland. Um, so Aberfeldy, uh, ind independent site, that's £33 per night, which is getting a bit pricey now. £33 a night um, with no electricity and it was on grass as well. So it just seemed a bit expensive for what you got. But it was a lovely location next to the river, which was beautiful. And just down the road, or just almost opposite actually, the Aberfeldy Whiskey Distillery. Uh, so that was nice, and it was a nice short walk into Aberfeldy itself. Lovely little town, really, really, really nice. And we had a lovely walk um, with my mate Rob, who, who's just moved there last year. Um, had a nice walk in the Burks of Aberfeld Aberfeldy, that's spelt B-I-R-K-S, Burks of Aberfeldy, um, that was lovely, although it was raining during that walk, it was just raining all, all the time there. But it's nice to see me old mate Rob, hi Rob and Claire and Imogen if you're watching. Um, so yeah, so it was nice to see them, lovely to see Aberfeldy, just a shame about the weather. And so we stayed there for two nights uh, because we wanted to go just a little bit further north up to Craigan Station, also in Scotland. Craigan Station Tours. This is, it was in the, just near west coast, near the west coast of Scotland, near the middle, central, sort of central Scotland off to the west, um, near, ne just next to Loch Craren. Um, near Oban and the Isle of Mull. Um, so yeah, lovely, lovely pitch, nice and high up. Wonderful views of the loch, Loch Craren, which was really, really good. Um, unfortunately, it just rained all the time, so we didn't, couldn't really enjoy the scenery much, couldn't really get out walking much. Although there weren't many public, weren't, weren't many places that we could walk along there, to be honest. Um, it was like one sort of public footpath thing, but it sort of petered out and became really overgrown. I tried to walk up. Uh, it's next to site. The, there's a cycle path going around there, so that's quite good for cycling. Although no views from the cycle path because there's trees either side. But it was quite nice cycling. And did we did go for a nice trip down to Appin? There's a lovely, lovely, really old pub. One of the nicest pubs I think I've visited. Proper old pub, whiskey pub as well. Um, it was called the Old Inn in Appin. Just, and in the pub garden, there's beautiful views just over Loch Linney to Castle Stalker, or Stalker Castle, um, which was absolutely gorgeous. So that was really, really nice. We had a nice wee dram, a couple of drams in that garden. Unfortunately, we got bit to pieces by a load of midges, um, but there you go. Um, so yeah, that was lovely. For about one afternoon, it didn't rain. It was beautiful, um, all the rest of it. Well, we ended up going for a drive to go through the countryside see what's going on but we couldn't really see much because it was just too great crowds clouds are too low and all that uh, we went into Oban for a nice day out so that was nice uh, we didn't go over to um, the Isle of Mull uh, largely because the weather really because um, we thought there was no point because we won't see anything and not only that it was raining all the time so yeah but it was a nice little trip lovely views from the caravan the bits of nice weather we did have were glorious and that was that was really absolutely wonderful in those bits um and the caravan site itself is near a really nice pub as well so that was nice where you meet and that's overlooking the loch Craren. so yeah i had a nice time there and we met up with my lovely cousin tina hi tina and john her husband um husband boyfriend no boyfriend oh sorry John, boyfriend, I think. Um, anyway, hi both, and the, the dog as well, whose name, Ellie, I forget, was it Ellie? Anyway, but anyway, hi all, uh, if you're watching, um, great to see you, look forward to seeing you again. Good, 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 so that was nice in Clegan Station. So yeah, if you're up that neck of woods, I, I recommend that, that was a nice, that was a good, good pitch. Just watch out for the midges, really need to bring something for the midges and um, take something for the sun, if you can get some sun, that'd be great. Um, and it was actually on a station as well, a disused railway station. Okie dokie, so, um, so that's in Clegan Station. And then from there we started coming back down to England on our way home. And just on the border of England and Scotland we were, let's have a look, were King Robert the Bruce camping and caravanning club site. 
um, just in Lockerbie actually, just on the border Scotland of Scotland and England. That was a lovely site that was, King Robert the Bruce. Um, really short walk to a decent pub in Lockerbie. Nice to visit Rob, Robert the Bruce's cave. I gather there's hundreds of caves around Scotland that claim to be Robert the Bruce's cave, um, as this was one of them. But it was nice to just visit that. That's pretty much part of the site, that cave. So really nice to visit that. Nice bit of, nice bit of history and all the rest of that. Lovely, lovely, lovely site. Uh, really, really good, 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 good stuff. So that was £20 per night grass with EHU electric hookup. So that was in July. And then we drove from there all the way back home in one go, uh, which is probably about 300 300, about 300 miles, something like that. So yeah. And then after that, so that was 2nd of July, then a month later, 5th of August, we spent six, night, six nights in Beeston Regis Holiday Park. So that was really good. That's between Sheringham and Cromer on the Norfolk coast. Uh, yeah, enjoyed that. A um, little bit pricey, uh, it's £32.50 with EHU. I suppose it wasn't too pricey, to be honest. It was a lovely, lovely place. Um, good facilities, all the rest of that. Nice views. Um, and, yeah, nice walk to Sheringham. Sheringham's literally just a 20-minute walk away um, over the hill, over the mound, which was nice, over to Sheringham. And Cromer, also nice to get down to Cromer. I remember we cycled, I think we cycled to Cromer. So that was good. West Runton was right near us where there's a railway station and a nice pub there. That's a nice, probably 30 minute walk from the campsite, which was nice, that was lovely. Cliff top views, really, really nice. Only downside there, it was about a good 10, 15 minute walk through Laburnum campsite to get to the beach. Um, and then we could, and then half of it was pebbly, go the other half, it was a bit more sandy. So yeah, a bit of a walk to the beach there, but nice beach. Um, so really like that actually. I think I prefer our Sandy Gulls one though, which is just on the other side of Cromer, because uh, this is just north of Cromer. Sandy Gulls, just I think it's just south of Cromer. So yeah, I think I prefer Sandy Gulls to this one, just because it's smaller, I suppose, and it's closer, to, it's easy, easier access to the beach um, in Sandy Gulls. But yeah, Beeston and Regis, like that. Lovely, 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 lovely views. And the weather, oh yeah, the weather was lovely. It was heating up. Yeah, it was when we started to have that heat wave back in the summer. Oh, a long time ago. And then shortly after that, 11th of August, we spent four nights in Norwich Camping and Caravanning Club site, £17.50, which was, yeah, that was pretty good value for money. Grass, no electricity. Uh, when we got there, they realised that we've got a dog, so they told us to go in the shaded area. Otherwise, we would have been right in the middle of this really sunny bit, um, which would have been okay, because we were in the middle of a really sunny bit at Beeston Regis. Um, but they um, said, because we've got the dog, don't want to risk him getting overheated, so they put us in the shady bit, which is great, but a little bit of a challenge for the solar. But that still managed it, because it was in the shade. Um, needless to say, I vlogged it. I took a photograph of the solar panel. It's pretty much complete, almost completely in the shade all the time, but just about managed to get us through. So, yeah, that was good. Um, lovely walk along the river to a nice pub and vegan and veggie restaurant really nice called river green in a little village called trowels lovely walk there along the river so really enjoyed that dog friendly as well the um, pub and the restaurant so that was that was i'd go there again just to, to go there really i mean i'd go to that campsite to go there again to the restaurant uh, that was really nice um, one hour walk into Norwich as well, um, so a decent walk into Norwich, but it's still nice and really like Norwich. That's pretty much the first time I've been, I've been to Norwich. Really, really liked it. Uh, we stayed off at a vegan meal for lunch, I seem to remember. A couple of pints, had a look round um, shopping areas. There's a new shopping area around the market and stuff as well. Uh, yeah, a bit of history there. Oh, it's, yeah, it was lovely, really. Obviously, didn't spend. Well, I didn't spend long enough there, so it left me wanting more, so I'd like to go back there again. Actually, I would. That is one place I would like to go back, largely because of the nice walk to the nice vegan restaurant and the nice pub. So that was good. That was Norwich Camping and Caravanning. And yeah, well-priced as well. £17.50 off-grid. Uh, nice grass bit. Nice busy campsite as well, I remember. But yeah, nice. Everybody's for it, nice and friendly and all that. So I like that. 
Um, but again, no real pub sort of next to it because I got, sometimes I like to just have an evening pint um, down the pub so there weren't any pubs right next to it but there was say one or two within 20-30 minute walk. So banging on again to the 3rd of September. Uh, spent three nights at Furnace Lane Marina CS. This is our first CS certified site because we're members of the Camping and Caravanning Club. So this is our very first CS. Reason we decided to start going to CSs is obviously they're a lot cheaper, but also at all these expensive sites we've been to, we never ever ever use any of the facilities. We always use our own kitchen, our own bathroom. Um, don't bother with the dog walk because the dog gets walked with us when we go walking. So we don't use any of the facilities at all. So we decided there's no point in paying for the facilities if we don't use them. So that's why we've started to go more into the CSs. And we had to download an app called Sightseeker from Camping Caravanning. You can get it from the Google Play Store um, or whatever the Apple alternative is. But yeah, Sightseeker uh, gives you the CSs. So that was really, 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 really nice, actually. I really like that. It was um, Nether Hayford. Uh, we spent three nights there. It's just off the M1, just west of Northampton in the Midlands. Lovely spot in the countryside, just next to the canal. Lovely canal side walks to a couple of local pubs in both directions, about half an hour. Beautiful pubs they were too. Nether Hay Hayford is a 10 minute walk, little village. Uh, lovely quaint little village with a couple of pubs, nice pubs and a shop. Beautiful. Um, not at one of those days, uh, I took Eric in his trailer and we went for a nice bike ride to near where, well, it was just around Althorpe Estate where Lady Diana was buried. So we went around there cycling around the villages and stuff. Um, that was really, really nice day out as well. Good weather for that one. Beautiful. Definitely like to go back there again. And 15 pounds a night. Well, what to, uh, yeah. yeah, brilliant. Sorted. Love it. Absolutely love it. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It was just nice sitting in the caravan and the view was going out over the, you know, where they, the marina bit. Tiny, it was just only a tiny marina, just a bit of the canal really, where they hooked up a few long boats, narrow boats. And it was just nice just hearing them chinkling away. It was really nice. Everybody's so friendly as well, and making friends with Eric. And oh, it was lovely. It really was nice. Enjoyed that. Uh, oh, yeah, that was a funny one because it's near Northampton. I've got a friend. Yes, I've got a friend. Wow. Stop press, whoa, headline news. So, um, yeah, I've got a friend who lives in Northampton and I'm currently giving, or I was at the time, giving his daughter driving lessons. And she had one booked for that weekend, which is one of the reasons we went to that site. So I thought, well, if we go there, I can give her a driving lesson at the same time. So we did. So that all worked out quite nicely because my tow car is also my driving instructor's car. So yeah, that all worked out. So they, I bet not many driving instructors <laughs> would do that, would they? go on holiday, especially near their pupils, so that they could continue giving their pupils lessons. I wouldn't normally give pupils in Northampton lessons, obviously, only because it's my friend and he wanted, he, she had a driving instructor, but they were a bit random. Um, not very good by the sounds of it. So I gave her lessons and all that. So that was great. Uh, then on the 14th of October for one, oh yes, 14th of October for one night, we were supposed to stay a couple of nights, but we end up staying one night at Eckington Weir Meadow, also known as Andrews Field. And this is near Tewkesbury, just on the River Avon, um, near Tewkesbury, right next to a village called Eckington. £10 a night off grid, uh, lovely big field, big field, which is only it's a CS, so only you know only about five caravans allowed on it. Um, it was right next to the river as well. You could choose your spot. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, just it's sort of south of Worcester and Birmingham. Um, the reason, very very sad news. The reason we we only spent one night there is because unfortunately after that night, um, Sadie's mum was taken quite very ill actually. And unfortunately, she passed away a few days later. But because she was taken very ill the next day, uh, we decided to pack up the caravan and come home so she could um, be with her mum and stuff. So, yeah, we would have liked to have stayed there a lot longer. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't mind going back there. Nice walks. I just managed to go on a walk in the evening. Um, and that was about it. Nice walk along the river. Um, so, yeah, 
lovely village, Eckington, a couple of nice pubs. So yeah, wouldn't mind going there again. Yeah, I must admit, a bit of a year uh, the missus has had really with her mum, now Eric, and uh, yeah. Anyway, so nearly there, nearly at the end. So we got 28th of October, we went away for two nights to, oh yes, no, just I went away to uh, for two nights in High Straggleton Farm, just north of Whitby, right next to Whitby in Yorkshire, up north. Um, which was, that was great actually, £26 a night, grass, that's on grass with electric hookup. Just north of Whitby, I went there uh, to meet up with my friend Rob, who lives in Scotland, the one that I saw earlier in Aberfeldy. He came down to meet up with us and we went to a great goth music festival because uh, it was on that weekend, it was on 28th of, yeah, 28th of November 1st, 28th of October, so the goth weekend in Whitby. And that was great, seeing all the goths walking around. The music festival itself was absolutely fantastic, really, really good. A couple of bands there that we we saw, we used to see about 30 years ago. It was great chat and meeting up with Rob again um, in our native environment. Beer, music, gigs, great. It's what we used to do in our youth when we were young. And it was great to be doing that again. Absolutely fantastic. I had such a great time there. Hi, Rob, if you're watching still. So that was lovely, that was uh, Straggleton Farm, the place itself, lovely site, it's on a nice, um, sort of on a nice tilt, so we've got nice views of the sea. Unfortunately again, because it's a music festival, everybody's coming and going at the same time, and it was raining most of the, pretty much all the weekend it was raining, so of course, like Laston Budget, um, it was very muddy on the way out, because all the other caravans had been leaving at the same time, so it was really muddy, um, and it was uphill as well, so my car, car couldn't even start off, because it was going uphill, uh, it just kept slipping straight away. So fortunately, Rob came with his Subaru four-wheel drive and he happened to have a tow bar already on the back of it. So he managed to tow the caravan out. So, whew, that was close. But yeah, that made me realise that that's why you need, obviously, a 4x4. General caravan pitches are fine, but if you're going to something like a festival when everybody's leaving at the same time. If it's a bit wet, it's gonna be a bit muddy and especially if it's going up uphill, then there's no way you're gonna be able to tow the caravan out in the mud uphill. Maybe along the flat, like I did in the Glaston budget, it's just about doable. Um, but even then, if I'd have got left later in the day or at Glaston budget, I don't think I would have been able to then, it would have been just a bloodbath. Bloodbath, mud bath. So <laughs> there you go. Oh, I tell I'm getting tired. Right, um, so that was High Straggleton Farm. Enjoyed that. Um, oh yeah, the festival we went to see, it was called Tomorrow's Ghosts Festival. There was, uh, yeah, all sorts of bands. Ghost Dance, uh, Balam and the Angel, um, Mark Armand's band, whose name I've forgotten now. He's in another band. He's, he's still doing his, um, taint, uh, oh God, soft sell. Yeah, soft cells seem to be touring, doing a sort of 80s tour, but he's, he's also in, a, in his own current band. Anyway, so that was lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so then we've got the 31st of October, four nights in back in Sandy Gulls. Um, yeah, we went there. Um, that's a bit off the radar. I didn't vlog that one because um, we went there because we decided with um, Sadie's mum had passed away a few weeks before that. Uh, she, Sadie just wanted to get away for some rest and relaxation. And I think it was her that actually came up with the idea of going to Sandy Gulls, just a quiet trip to Sandy Gulls, because we love it there, it's just so relaxing. Um, so we just uh, stayed there for four nights. Again, 23 pounds a night, hard standing, with EHU and uh, views to die for. And it was really, really, really nice. So it was just nice to go for walks along the, along the beach with the hound. And then after that, 31st of October, um, after that, oh, that was our last holiday. Then 2nd of, that was 31st of October, and then the 2nd of December, so over a month later, 
We spent 14 nights, shock horror, our longest trip yet, although it wasn't a trip, well, it was a trip all the way up the driveway. Yeah, 14 nights in the driveway from the 2nd of December, um, coming up to about uh, about the 20th of December, about 14th, 18th, yeah, about 18th, 20th of December. We stayed in the driveway. Reason being, because we haven't been caravanning for a long time, so we're kind of missing it, but also with the bills the way they are at the moment, uh, we thought we'd wonder if we could save a little bit of money in the caravan. Uh, so we don't have to have the gas heating on in the house. Having said that, we didn't really save any money at all because in the house the heating isn't on anyway. Only sort of every now and then we sort of put it up to tender. That's why I've got my hat on. It's freezing. No heating on. Um, occasionally, about once a week, we thought, oh, treat ourselves. We put it up to about 10 degrees. Uh, maybe take one layer off. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much not on anyway at the moment so it didn't really save us any money um, plus it did also mean that we had to buy gas tanks uh, for every five days had to buy a gas canister so we bought a couple of those uh, got the price down to 22 pounds 50 either way it, but having said that it was nice to be in somewhere cozy and warm so that was nice because if we were in the house we wouldn't have been cozy and warm we'd be sitting there with our blankets on so it was nice to be able to stay somewhere where it's cozy and warm um, yeah in the caravan so we enjoyed that after a while though Sadie gets a bit of cabin fever I suppose I do um, after a while so we wanted to come back in spend our Christmas here and it was just after that that Eric got really poorly uh, yeah so there we go and that's our year that pretty much concludes our little year of 2022 oh hang on while I'm talking to you I'll just fire up me Google diary and because we've got a couple of trips lined up our next trip for 2023 which we may or may not be going on we might count so it all depends on how the dog's doing and how the weather's doing really because it's going to be off grid so our next trip is booked for friday the 6th of january at manor house caldicott corby so corby northamptonshire near north Am northampton um that's probably yeah that's about three nights five pounds off grid cheap as chips five pounds but it is literally a field um, but there is water and there is um and a, uh, there is water and there is toilet dump Elsan, yeah that there so five pounds i can't argue with that i uh, just thought we'd do that just a little nearby trip away so we, we, that's what we're trying to do in the future a few more nearer trips so they don't cost so much and cs's this is a cs as well um so we may or may not have um, they're all okay if we cancel it at the last minute all depends on how eric's doing and the weather and then we have got hang on i'll do a search all right we've got our we have got another book tripped, another trip booked. Um, we've got Sandy Gulls booked for the 24th of June. I'm going to say for six nights, so that'll be nice. Sandy Gulls in Norfolk again near Munsley. And then that's on the 6th of June up to the 29th. And then we're going to, from Sandy Gulls, we're going to Jubilee Campsite off grid, £17 a night for five nights. That's Jubilee Camping and Caravanning Club site, certified club site near Raiden in Southwold. All right, Southwold, just on the east coast as well. So I guess I think that's just south of um, south of Sandy Goals. So yeah, that'll be nice. Staying there, cheap as chips, lovely jubbly, £17 per night off grid. And then after that, we've got Sandy Goals again, booked in October for six nights. Oh, and that's it. That concludes it. And no doubt we'll be going to Glastonbridge next year and probably a whole load of other places. So, yeah, looking forward to all that. But as I say, with Eric being so poorly at the moment, that's pretty much all that we can think about. It's all-encompassing having Eric like this. Uh, we just can't think of anything else, talk about anything else, or do anything else. I've cancelled what well, I had this week off anyway, but I cancelled my lessons last week because um, we were taking it to and from the vets and things. Um, which is obviously costing us a lot of money as well. Just uh, what well, we spend about four and a half grand on his just on the, just on the first rounds of checkups and that sort of stuff, just getting him diagnosed. Um, so obviously that's going to cost well. But anyway, when you've got pets, that's the sorts of crazy things you need to do for them, I guess. But yeah, well, he's not just a pet, is he? Member of the family. But anyway, yeah. So 
there you go that pretty much concludes uh, this little vlogette so thank you very much for watching i uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully at a site sometime soon that'll be nice um, i'll keep you updated with eric probably in the next vlog um, so until then laters taters thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe